Um, hi everyone, my name is Cam. I work at Vendasta as a product marketing manager and today we have special guests from Mono Solutions and uh, Z Digital. So it's Brady Klein um, and Steve Weber and we'll be talking about how to deliver small business success through code-free uh, websites. So I'll be passing off uh, the conversation to Brady and Steve. So Awesome. Cool. Thanks, Cam. Um, I'm going to share my screen here real quick um, and open this up to get started. So thanks everybody for joining. Um, I'm Brady. I'm partner success manager here at Mono. Um, making sure everybody sees my screen all right. Um, so I've been with Mono about a year and a half and uh, we, we launched in the Vendasta marketplace just over a year ago. Um, so, you know, Thanks for, thanks for bringing us on here and to, to make this, this webinar as interesting as we can, um, I wanted to bring in Steve Weber, who is the founder of Z Digital. He's, um, he's a wealth of knowledge. Z Digital is one of our, um, our biggest users in the Vendasta marketplace. So um, I think Steve will give a lot, of, a lot of great perspectives on, you know, how to, not just how to leverage Mono specifically, but selling websites, pricing, production, really the, the whole process from start to finish. He's got a, a lot of great knowledge on, and I think it'll be beneficial for, for everybody in here. So quick agenda. Um, I'm just going to start by, you know, talking about the current state of small businesses and giving a brief overview of the Mono website builder. Um, and then from there, I'll bring on Steve and we'll just, you know, have a conversation. Um, we have, we have some talking points that we'll hit on and, uh, of course, everybody, you know, feel free to jump in, ask questions. This is, can be as open of a dialogue as, as we can. So starting off, uh, and, you know, this is no surprise to anybody, but small businesses have definitely been affected by, by the pandemic a lot. Um, so, you know, you can see that stat on the right, 44% of small businesses have invested in expanding their website. And I think that's, that's you know, a likely result of, everyone having to move online. Um, so really while, while COVID has negatively affected the economy as a whole, it's really pushed people more quickly to get online. Um, and I think that creates a lot of opportunity for, for agencies like you all. So, you know, as an industry, it's, it's our job to, to provide those solutions to those businesses and, and help them get digital as fast as they can. Um, and, Part of that is that Protect Local initiative that Vendasta has been running, which I think has been really successful so far. And it's just a great idea to, to help people get online and get all the tools that they need as fast as possible. So next, why Mono? Um, I, you know, I've been with Mono a year and a half. And so I, I think in, in my opinion, Mono fits in as a way for you to build good looking websites really quickly. Um, and, you know, we, we all know the struggle of building websites. I'm sure a lot of you out there currently work on WordPress, uh, which is, is the most popular of the website platforms, but we see ourselves as a great alternative to that because we allow you to basically get the same result and do it a lot faster. So that's where we fit in. We have a really easy editor. We have a lot of pre-designed rows, pre-designed pages, uh, basically, you know, you can go start to finish in as little as two, three hours. Um, and included in that is fully full responsiveness. Every website is fully responsive down to tablet and mobile. It's optimized for search. Uh, we, we pride ourselves on our website's SEO capabilities. Um, and then included in that uh, package when you purchase a mono website through Vendasta is free hosting on AWS. So that's you know one more reason to to go with a mono website and pass that starting at only nine dollars a month for uh, Vendasta members. So with that, I'm going to bring on Steve um, and let Steve kind of give you a quick overview of Z Digital uh, and where he came from. So Steve, thanks for joining today. Great to be here. Um, so yeah, we start. I started Z Digital. I've been in the business for a while. Started Z Digital uh, last summer, 2019, and I was looking to um, really try to focus in on websites more than some of the other kind of agency product offerings like 
social media management or search engine optimization, really for the main reason that um, it's less labor intensive and you know the margins can be great. So that was really kind of why our company's main focus is now websites, but our company offers you know the full range of you know internet marketing tools from social media management, many of the Vendesta tools we use, search engine optimization, Google ads, Facebook ads, we kind of do everything. But my business strategy is to try to really hone into websites because they're not labor intensive. And you know, once we get a client, we're gonna have a high retention with a high margin. So that's, that's why we really focus on websites. Awesome. Thank you for that. And yeah. uh, so we'll just, you know, just jump into a, to a quick conversation here about, about websites, about your experience. Um, and I think, of course, anybody jump in at any time with any questions. Um, I'm going to exit this presentation actually to make sure I have my notes in front of me. Um, but Steve, why don't you start off with, you know, telling everybody a little bit about why, why you chose to sell websites, what got you into the website business and what's, what's appealing to you about selling websites? Well, uh, frankly, I got into the website business back in the mid nineties and when you know, no one had them. And my, my company at the time that I ended up selling was able to sell about 40,000 websites and 40, 000, that's a big number. We had about a hundred full-time salespeople. Um, but I kind of already made the point to me and my business strategy, the money's in the recurring revenue. You know, we've got social media clients, you know, that are paying us, you know, thousand dollars a month to manage their social media, but you know, it's a headache and I've got to apply a lot of labor. I got a high cost. It's, it's much lower margin business to me than if I get a bunch of websites where once the sites are up and launched, I have almost no customer service costs, partially because of the mono pricing model. I've got very high margins with very low, um, with very low labor costs and very high retention where I found on some of the other uh, flavors uh, that our company sells, other products that our company sells, products and services, I should say. Um, the churn rates are high. It's really difficult to predict the lifetime value of a customer because you don't know how long they're going to stay. So my strategy has been get a lot of little clients and the money for me is in the back end. And we really just, the COVID threw our business strategy off to the side and we had to kind of re, repurpose and repivot. And we kind of started- Hi, this is Debbie. We, we started um, going into the healthcare space because they're open and they're available. Oh, hi. Um, we've, got, um, you know, we've got the ability to build uh, you know, a lot of recurring revenue with, very low, with, with high margins. That's, that's my strategy. I don't know if that's what yeah. you're looking for. Yeah, um, and so maybe a little bit on that. How, how have you been able to leverage you know, Vendasta and, and the model platform to, to accomplish that? Well, the benefit to me of, of Vendesta, first of all, was when I first started my company, it allowed me to kind of have a wide range of products. Everyone knows there's, you know, over hundred products in the marketplace. And I just picked about five. And if you go to, you know, later go to zdigital.com, you'll see what five that they are. And um, it immediately put me in the business of, wow, I got an SEO solution. I've got a social media solution. I've got do it yourself. We can provide full service. Um, we've got a website solution. So to me, it was plug and play that I didn't have to go hire developers and technical people and, you know, figure out hosting and, um, you know, servers and all that stuff. To me, it was just plug and play rapidly in business with a lot of options. And then um, when Mono came on, um, you know, it's a great product. We can make really good looking websites inexpensively. Uh, the month to month billing model is great for us. Where with some of the other providers out there, you've got to um, you know, the annual to get um, the best pricing, um, which to me doesn't work out very well. So I like the month to month. I like the cost. And it's a high quality product. It performs well. It performs in SEO. The mono sites outperform most other sites or everyone's the other platforms as it relates to um, Google page speeds. And it allows us to effectively, you know, to, it. We're a great example of the mono promise that, hey, you can make great websites very quickly. And yeah. I don't have to worry about the back end stuff. I don't have to worry about having guys that know HTML and CSS. I don't have to worry about servers and hosting and all that stuff. Perfect. Perfect. 
Um, so, you know, along those lines, we, we talked before the call, uh, before the webinar, obviously, about, about the idea of selling websites. So you've been in this business a long time, um, and you, you laid out a few reasons of, of your strategy in selling websites and how you are able to get to that point where the setup's really quick, the, and, you know, the back and forth are low, and then you get to that recurring revenue situation where you have low maintenance, low support costs, and you're building up that recurring revenue. So why don't you talk a little about, about the philosophy behind selling and what you try to emphasize with your sales teams when selling websites. Yep. So the biggest challenge in selling websites, in my opinion, is content. And it, that's, that's one challenge is, you know, we've got numerous sites just stuck on the side of the road. It's almost, you know, and we're just waiting on client content. I mean, that is a, Big, big challenge. Um, I'll, I'll come back to our, some, of the, some of the production steps and some things we've done to minimize content being a challenge for production. Um, but I think one of the, the, the mo one of the most important things in selling websites is that the site is clearly defined, meaning the customer knows what they're buying. This puts a lot of weight or a lot of, um, what's it called, importance on the sales process and the salesperson in our, in our way of selling, the salesperson is very much the designer because they're the one that's creating the blueprint and getting the customer. The customer has to know what they're buying. And those limitations of what is included for the price must be very clearly documented because otherwise you're going to get into feature creep. You're going to get into changes. And if it's sold squishy and they don't know what they've bought, then all of a sudden I go, oh, I want to add this. And oh, I saw this other thing. I'd like to add that. So we've become really good at the specs, what I call the blueprints or wireframe, whatever you want to call it, that we've said, you know, you got a five page website, a 12 page website, a 17 page website, and here's what it includes. And here's what the pages are. And here's what we allow per page. And anything outside of that is going to cost more. A contractor's not going to go build a house without blueprints. So the salespeople are trained to be architects, and to go back and forth with the client and all that's got to be done. I say, man, move them to the one yard line before you ever quote the price. And the more invested that that client gets in this design process with our sales rep, you know, the more in the bag, the less likely they're going to switch to some other, other uh, provider. So there's a, you know, the back and forth is happening pre-sale. Frankly, we make the back and forth happen before we quote a price which gives them a reason to keep talking to us. They don't know the price yet. Well, I can't quote you the price, Mr. Prospect, until we're really clear on what it is, what we're, we're selling you. Scope of work. Okay. So we've got to go back and forth. So take that back and forth, take those edits, take that design work and move it to the sales process and make sure that's well agreed upon and well documented before a sales made. So I'm quoting you the right thing. Then half the job is done because the client knows what they're buying and all the expectations are set. It's in writing and we're good. <clears throat> Perfect. And then, um, so, you know, you hit on pricing a little bit there. So how, how do you price in your model? Since you know that a lot of that work is going to be done up front and you know, your goal is to build up that recurring revenue. And we, we talked about this previously too. Not, not everybody is going to be set up like that where they can scale up to you know, a really high number of websites, but maybe just from your experience, how, how have you decided how you want to charge for both setup and that recurring? Great question. So my business strategy is get a lot of little websites. And I mean, hundreds and eventually thousands, by the way. Um, and the money's in the back end. the money's in the hosting, the money's in the recurring. Um, so because of that, you know, I, my bias is, my, my setup costs are typically low because my financial model is based on my lifetime value of the client. And, you know, businesses are, should, you know, most small businesses will keep their website if you do it right for years. So th that is definitely taken into consideration. Um, so frankly, I don't want the price point to be an obstacle to my sales threat or to the client because a higher price, it's harder to sell and it's harder to buy. So we have a bias towards lower front end costs just to, to um, lower any barriers or friction points to actually making the sale. I'm trying to get 
a fast sales cycle, you know, but my, our cost of sale is hundreds percent more than our cost of production, right? So the cost of me to get a client is this, the cost of me to produce a website is this. So what I quickly try to do, Brady, is I, I just try to cover my cost of sales and pay my sales team, right. my cost of sales and production. If I can, if I can make that a wash or close or make some money or not there, that's not my, you know, I'm trying to offset the, the cost of sales to facilitate my, if the salespeople can pay for themselves through the setup fees, I can just keep hiring more salespeople. Yeah. So my business model goes for lower end pricing. So I've started with low pricing with the goal that, hey, I'll see what the market will bear. But I said, hey, let's not make price an obstacle. So let's start low with low pricing and be aggressive and build a business model on the back end revenue. And then over time, you know, we'll start ratcheting that price up and see, you know, we'll get as much as we can. We'll get what the market yeah. will bear. But and our, our uh, important, uh, I mean, uh, uh, no, you're good. The important point is we're typically in the five to 15 page type website. I don't want 10 and $20,000 websites. They're a headache to make money on. It's feast or famine. You know, I don't know if I need to talk about that. I want a lot of little ones. And we've just generally say, hey, given that it's photos and content and forms mainly, right? Pictures, words, and forms. It's very basic type. Bro. There's no software embedded. There's not a bunch of custom design. We're not making logos for people, okay? If it's, if it's a basic website, we just say, hey, our range is a, our starting range as a baseline is a hundred to two hundred dollars a page for the design and setup, and that's just our that's just our kind of our, our benchmark. So yeah. five page website will sell it for five six hundred bucks setup. Um, you know I think our biggest website we sold so far is twenty five hundred. Um, you know there was a lot more navigation, a lot more content. There's a lot more back and forth and project management because we got to have the content. Those big sites are kind of a pain in the butt. I know we're going to talk about that on production. Um, so we just kind of started a hundred to two a page. Now, if they've got extensive and they want it to do this and that, and the page is this long and has all these features, well, I've also quoted thousand dollars for one page. They said, Oh, I want yeah. it to look like that. I'm like, okay, well we can make it look like that, but that's a lot of work. So right. that's obviously the exception, not the rule, but we go out saying, Hey, hundred and 200 pages are baseline. That's what we tell a client, you know, when they ask, well, how much is this going to cost? Yeah. hundred to 200 a page. And then we, and then, our, our, our monthly recurring right now, we're at 39 a month, um, you know, which gives us a nice 75% margin. Um, and we'll see how that goes. We'll experiment with raising it. We'll experiment with lowering it. But when yeah. I got going on this, I didn't want pricing to be a barrier. Yeah. And, you know, I think, I think the, the other point there to bring up is, is that you're, you're flexible on those prices. No, it's really difficult to come in, set that price and be right the first time. Right. So being flexible, being able to to move on both that setup and the recurring and playing with that, especially based on the volume of sites you have, is is really beneficial to building up that that business model. And, you know, on that, you would also made a note about how you price based on cold calling versus inbound leads. So outbound versus inbound. So you want to hit a little bit on that? Yeah. If I've got a, uh, a referral or we were running Google ads to generate leads, which those leads were very expensive, by the way, trying to do pay-per-click for websites is a, is, a, is a tough mountain to climb, especially at the price point I'm going for, these lower price points. Um, if I've got you know, an inbound that's a referral, I can charge more, right? If, I, if my sales team's cold calling out and trying to get you to buy a website, I've gotta be much more aggressive in pricing. So, um, I'll take that and consider, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be strategic and maximize my, my, my sales. But yeah. of course, you know, you got to consider your financial model too, because it takes a while for that, that, the, that recurring hosting to add up to something that's, you know, meaningful. Right. And, you know, last thing on, on selling, and I know you, you all have done this with a lot of success um, and not to get too deep into your, your business model, but, can you talk a little bit about how you try to sell into certain verticals, certain niches, and how that has been beneficial for you? Not, not just in figuring out who to target, but then, you know, past that on the production side, how, how much more efficient you can be really knowing what you're building ahead of time. 
Yeah, well, I, I learned that when I first got in the website business way back in the early days. And I had a company that I started called Z57 Internet Solutions. And we were selling one-offs to everybody. This was back in 98, man, when almost no one had a website. So one's a restaurant, the next one's a lawyer, the next one's a transmission shop, the next one's a bar and restaurant, the next one's a realtor, the next one's an insurance agent. And we did that for about six months and we drove everybody crazy because you couldn't, nothing was scalable. The sales guys couldn't handle it because they didn't know anything about any industry they were calling in. Every single thing we were selling was different. Production team had a nightmare because every product they're making is a complete custom and one-off. And we abandoned that as quickly as we could. It was a mess. It was just by nature unscalable. So we tested multiple verticals for back in the day. And we said, we'll call in this market, this market, this market, this market. And my company pretty quickly, again, this is my previous company, went straight into realtors because there was a million of them. They answer their own phone. None of them had a website and they all needed them. So we were kind of first to market and just crushed it and hired a hundred sales people and sold, like I said, 40,000 of them. So kind of same thing digital. Um, I'm trying to kind of, you know, that's a really important sales people when you know, every single one is different. How do you train anybody to do it? It's really hard to train effective website salespeople, but if right. you're in the same market, they start to know the players, they start to know the lingo, you start to, you're, the companies are all the similar structure that you can sell into. But you know, if one guy, if I call a dentist office today and a, you know, surf shop the next day and a real estate broker the next day, they'll have wildly different needs. You know, they all, there's different competitors in each one of those. The size of the business is different. Who the decision maker is, is different way to get to. I like trying to sell people where I can get the de decision maker on the call and sell it to them, which is really difficult in bigger companies. So yeah. we're focusing on smaller businesses, primarily five and 10 page websites. Um, you know, we'll go to 15 or 20 occasionally. Um, I don't know if that was yeah. what, what we were No, that's to. perfect because you know, in the end, then your salespeople know how to speak their language, right? They're not, they're not calling all these different verticals and just talking about, what they, what they think that business might, might want. Right. If you, yeah. I mean, you call on the same, if I'm only calling on restaurants all day, by the end of that day, I'm going to know what, what the majority of restaurants are looking for. So I think that's, you know, of everything we're talking about today, that's, that's easily one of the, one of the biggest takeaways that, that I have. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we, that's, that applies to all different businesses, all different verticals. I mean, we have the same struggle with our own products, right? building one product to apply to all of these different verticals. And, you know, you can see it in trends in, in the market today with different software companies, how they're focusing more on specific niches, you know, like let's take online restaurant ordering and do it really well. And that's what we're going to do. And then you start, you start taking that market share. Well, you can build a product specifically for them. You can try and script, you can build a sales outline and a sales strategy specifically for them. And here's a little secret sauce. Another thing that's possible is I've hired some copywriters that can also help create co some content that's universal to different niches. Right. And content's always a pain in the butt. It's always a problem. So yeah. if you can assist, you know, you can bring some content to the party. That's um, a nice, nice angle. And perfect segue into, into the last topic that I wanted to hit on is, is on the production side. So, you know, you've, your salespeople have made that call. They've clearly set the, you know, defined what the product is, what the, what the customer is buying. And then you get to the production side. And like you said, you hit that content wall. So what's, what's your best advice on how to get over that wall and get the wheels turning? I got a lot on this one. Um, anyone who's ever sold websites knows that you will get a ton of clients that have big dreams and hopes when you're brainstorming and, and selling and when they're thinking about it. And then when it comes to actually producing content, you know, your average small business owner can't even write a 200 word welcome message for their homepage. Um, so what happens is sites just die waiting for content. I mean, we have clients now, even with this, some of the secrets I'll share with you that have been sitting for months. I got one that's probably going on a year 
and the site's not up. And we have called the guy, I'm not kidding, 30 to 40 times, phone calls, emails. Yeah, I'll get to it. It's just not a priority. So any potential profit in that deal is long gone because the amount of effort it's taken to try to extract the content from the client. Um, so content is, a, and by the way, a lot of those will cancel and want a refund because they'll yep. say, oh, well, hey, you know, the site never went live. You know, this is just more of a hassle, forget it. So this also goes way back to the sales process of really defining what the site's gonna include and talking to the client. I say, what do you have for content? Because you have this big old vision and this is a lot of work on your part. This is going to be, you know, I'm dealing with a contractor right now and he wants to have a portfolio and a projects. I go, look, photos make a website. You, I mean, if you want to do a portfolio of all these past projects, do you have good or better yet, you know, professional grade photography of these products, of these projects, of this house you built or the shopping mall you built? So if you don't have the images, when we get to portfolio, we're going to be stuck on photos. So that'll be part of the process. I, I, I myself, and I trained this, my sales team. I got four sales people thinking about there's wondering. Um, I, I, I said, you got to knock the dreamers off their cloud sometime. You just start talking to this guy and they'll say, oh, I wanted to do this and this, and we want this and this and all these pages. I say, well, what do you have for content? Now, if they don't, you know, if they have an existing website, I'm looking at that, taking that into consideration. I can see what they have for content, at least what's published online. But I can ask them, what else do you have for photos? Where are you going to get all this copy, all these words that we're going to put on here? And a lot of times we'll say, I want this and I want to do this and I want to. I said, by the way, what do you, what's your budget? What do you expect something like that to cost? Right. And they'll say, well, I don't know. And I'll say, well, you know, I'll, ma I'll make this one up, but this definitely happens. I'll say, just so you know, your dream of this, 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 this is probably, you're talking like way over $10,000, right? You know, what I recommend, look, let's get a foundation going here. Let's get you started with something basic, okay? You know, five, 10 pages, whatever, and I can give some guidance on that in a sec. And then you add on as you go. But I don't want to take on a project that they can't bring the materials to, to produce. So that's a huge thing about production um, and about content and about getting these things built is not overselling size of site, number of pages, which plays right into my strategy. Get a lot of little ones. Yeah. Uh, so if it's a remodel, you know, if it's a redesign, we can look at their previous content. The other thing, huge secret sauce here, took a long time to learn this. Please, if you got one takeaway, it should, this might be the best one, everybody, is we push what we call placeholder content hard. And what we say is this, that look, we're going to build your site. Let's say it's a, a redesign. And let's say they're all, you know, their website's eight years old and it's got kind of limited content. We're going, to say, look, we're going to move everything over from your existing site. We're going to drop some professional photography in here. And we want to launch your site as soon as possible with a professional look. Let's get it going. Let, let's get it um, registered with Google and let's get your SEO started. And your site's a work in progress. You can add it. You send us the stuff. We'll have it up in 24 hours. But let's launch this site with something. Even if we hide a few pages, or even if we say coming soon, I'd rather just hide the page than just put coming soon as my recommendation to clients. Um, we'll, we'll, we sell them on stock for using stock photography. A lot of clients are, oh, I don't want stock photography. I go, look, the wrong stock photography sucks. But if you can go, don't, you don't want pictures with the fake looking models that's clearly a stock photo. You, if you know how to do it, you can find stock photos that are a great placeholder. Right? It can get the job done. And then you can replace that later. So default content, starting content, it's a work in progress. So many people are wired to the old days of making a brochure, right? It doesn't go to print until it's perfect. I'm like, no, no, right. We want to launch your site in seven to 10 days with whatever we have. And then from there you can change it. That way it can start building them for hosting and the monkeys on their back to give me the content. Huge, super important. Everyone that is a big one. So instead of them saying, oh, the site's not launching because um, we don't have content. No, launch with, I don't care if it's a homepage and a contact us page, we're launching. We'll turn your other pages on whenever you're ready. And that's part of our whole agreement and how we sell it. Right? And I think what, what probably a lot of people are thinking is how often after you launch with that placeholder content, 
do they not get back to you with their own content? And then that placeholder content just stays anyway, right? All, all the time. Never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, if you sold them yeah. an eight page site, you launch with two pages, that's problematic. They're not going to be happy. But I will give uh, uh, data from thousands of websites in Z57. We were doing realtor websites. We put a, um, a stock welcome message and it was professionally written and it was universal. It kind of worked for any realtor. You know, hey, I'm Joe Realtor. Welcome to my site. Looking forward to helping you find your dream home. I'm going to negotiate the best deal. We're available. We're experienced. We know the area, blah, blah, blah. We put that up there. And, the, and then the, the homepage image, we had regional. So if it was in, you know, Arizona, it had, you know, cactus. If it was in California, it had palm trees. And if it was in Seattle, it had mountains or whatever. We had regional placeholder photos. And we launched with that all the time. And a very small percentage ever changed their homepage or uh, message, welcome message or homepage image. I don't have the data, but I would say it was probably less than 20% ever changed it out of yeah. thousands. And uh, that, that kind of, that, that kind of plays into just the, the transformation of the idea of a website today, right? It's becoming much less of a, of just a, a brand recognition tool and instead becoming a conversion tool. So for those realtors, I mean, in the end, like who cares if it's a, if it's a landscape picture of the mountains or if it's, you know, a, a specific house that you bought, the, the question is, are people coming to your site? And once they're on that site, are they calling you? Are they filling out a form? Are they emailing you? Is it generating inbound leads? Right? So, you know, is that something that you, that you stress to your salespeople to, to discuss in the sales process and, you know, make sure they hit on that idea of conversions. Yes. That's a good point. A big part of our positioning is this people must many um, prospects have the mindset that a website is all about, you know, a new client finding you. And although that's the ultimate, right? What we really emphasize is, Hey, that happens. Of course. But the reason you've got to have a professional website today is everybody Googles you. And any of you could Google, actually Google it this. It's called Zero Moment of Truth. It's something that Google teaches. Mm -hmm. And there are videos all online from, called Zero Moment of Truth by Google. And what Google has proven is that there's a new step in the sales process that people Google research you after they hear about you, but before they do business with you. So that's a big part of our sales presentation is look, you know, of course you want to be number one in Google. And of course you want people to find you. I mean, depending on your business type, that's difficult. Okay. But everybody's going to Google you. So you've got to have a professional presence. It's got to be mobile optimized. It's got to be current. It's got to look good. If you have an eight year old crappy website, it's going to undermine your credibility. So in our office, we call it fishing hook versus sales aid. Because the, the, the prospect thinks it's a fishing hook that they're going to hook new clients in on this. And we're like, well, that's great when it does, but you need this as a sales aid. So when people are researching you, they can find you when they're looking for your name. So there's between name search versus category search, right? So we really emphasize name search. People are looking for you. They've got to find you and you got to look good. Now, once you got that down, if you want to work on category search, you know, Hire us to do your SEO and your Google AdWords. Nice add-on, right? And so fishing hook right, and that's that's again one of the big benefits of of this launching with the content that you do have, right? Because not only can you that add on pages Mitch. later. Say it again, Mitch. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, not only can you just keep adding on pages later, but you know you can also upsell additional products. Right, because you already, they're already a customer of yours. So, Absolutely. yeah, we have great and website yeah. clients are perfect for SEO and Google Ads, depending on their business type. And by the way, more pages. Right. So, right. you know, this one guy I was talking to yesterday, I said, look, hey, every website has a home page, every website has a contact us page. Think of that as the cover of your book. Okay. All in the middle is products and services for the most part. So, you know, if you go to Apple, they got hundreds of pages of products and services, but this guy's a real estate developer, right? So you need a homepage, you need a contest page, put in there, portfolio, service, projects, 
I go, start with three, four pages. I go, if yep. you want to have huge pages with all your profiles and all the, you know, sequential photos of your stuff being built and all that, great, add it later, but let's just get you going with three or four pages and you can add all that on later. I go, that'll, it'll take the burden off of you to be uh, bogged down with developing all this content. So let's start small and up. Huge part of our sales process. And I think and that's the mistake that most, People want the big bucks. They want the set. They want the twenty five hundred some dollar setup fee or whatever, um, which is great when you can get it. Um, I'll take the small deal. I'll get the twenty five hundred later. If I got their account, it's mine to lose. We offer a high level of service. People aren't stealing our website clients. Right, and you know you just hit on it too. Obviously launching those sites with whatever content you have is really beneficial to you, the agency, because you want to get that up and running. But right there, you just were able to flip that and show how it's also beneficial to them, right? Because the burdens off them to, to really like hustle and get you all of this content quickly so you can get this website up and get it running. Then, you know, sites launched, they can take a deep breath and then really focus on whatever content they want to add to those additional pages. Yep. Um, so, you know, that was, that was most of, of what we had. Um, so I'd love to open it up to any questions. If people have questions, um, I have not been checking the chat, but let Wait, me let open me, that up. Let, real me, quick. let me throw just kind of, I just want to put the icing on the cake on that one. Cause I think it's such an important thing. When sure. we were waiting for kind of client approval to launch, which we did, we've done in the history of this company in the last year, year and a half. They get stuck in they get stuck in production and it's a headache. When we've switched to this, we're launching with what we have and we said this is how we do it. What's great about it is the sites launch quicker. We're we're billing quicker. They're not stuck in production. But see, the burden's on the client now to reach out to us to make the changes instead of the burdens on the production team to reach out to them to get content or approval. And the clients will hold you hostage. Oh, well, it's not ready to launch okay. yet. You can't bill me yet. So we just flipped the script on it and said, this is how we do it. We're going to put, we're going to launch in seven to 10 days right. and you're going to give us the rest of the content whenever you want. And so instead of right. my guys and girls calling them 10, 15, 20 times trying to get some freaking pictures or content, it's on them. And we're sending them an email saying, Hey, we're here whenever you're ready, you know, reminder, Hey, send us your stuff. They have to call us. Cause the other thing is, they stand you up for these darn content and walkthrough meetings left and right. So now the right. burden on them to book the appointment with us. So our productivity and production has been dramatically improved by this stuff. Huge stuff. Yeah. Um, and glad that you emphasize that again. We're also getting some questions in the chat on that, on that specifically. And um, Pablo just asked what, what kind of pricing strategy do you, do you have for future modifications after, after launch? How exactly do you price that out with, with those customers? Uh, I'm not sure if he was on the whole call because I see someone else made a note and said they came in a little late asking a question, but um, kind of the same structure. You know, my goal is to provide great service and retain these clients. You know, if we're charging 39 and maybe we end up charging more because we can bundle some other things along with just the hosting. And we do, by the way, you know, our clients are between 39 and a thousand a month. Um, the vast majority of them are 39, by the way. Okay. A thousand a month when we're managing their social media, you know, a, a lot. Um, so I'd rather have, I would way rather have 25 clients um, at 39 a month than one social media client at a thousand a month, way more profitable. And you have all that upsell and you have all those referrals and all the, li the lifetime value of, that of, the, of 25 website clients is way more than the lifetime value of one $1,000 a month social media full service client. So right. I'm trying to keep them happy. I'm trying to provide great service. You know, we answer the phone, we, you know, we provide professional service. So um, again, it's kind of what the market will bear Pablo. But same kind of thing, 100 to 200 a page. You know, that's kind of the going rate. So if they call and go, oh, we want to add a page. I mean, to me, 100 to $200 page, my team can make in mono in, if I have the content, in five minutes. Okay? And, and on like average it. page, you know, when I, when I, these pages I'm talking about, this 100 to $200 page to give it some context, it's typically going to be, you know, two, 300 words 
and you know three four photos now we'll put the photo gallery in there and say you can upload you send us all the photos you want we'll put them in there um you know but if they start getting these long scrolling pages with boat tons of content that all has to be laid out that's not a hundred dollar page so when i say a hundred dollar page our standard page the hundred dollar page it's like an about us page where there's maybe a hero across the top you know company story here maybe a few photos and a form at the bottom that to me is a hundred dollar page and my team can make it in 10 minutes yep. if we have the content right now if yeah. they want to if they want to get into an elaborate page with a lot of content that's laid out and it's got this left right look or sliding things and movement animations and that kind of stuff well that could be a two three four hundred dollar page it all just comes down to kind of hours you know how long does right. it get? How long is it, gonna, it really with mono it's minutes not hours which is a great thing about you know plug for mono um which i have no incentive to plug mono <laughs> um, so 100 to 200 a page yeah and and, it goes up. you know another question in here right now is is why are you choosing to charge monthly instead of going that annual route ah payment great question um we do some prepaid annual and we have an incentive called prepaid hosting. And we say, if you prepay for 12 months, we give you three months of free. So you get 15 months for 12 months, um, which I like that upfront revenue, but payment, the problem is what happens in 15 months? Now they got to make another decision right now. Oh, what it makes them think, wow, what have I gotten for my investment? Do I want to kind of keep going? And of course, what our contract says, is at the end of the 15 months, it's gonna to transition to month to month automatically, by the way. Um, but it usually needs some sort of a follow-up sales call to kind of resell them, or they want another discount at that time. So I've had great success by just, you know, putting on their credit card, it's gonna run forever until the card, you know, declines, then we'll call them and get a new number or whatever. Um, so we're, we're doing both, but, I'm trying to build a lot of recurring revenue. By the way, that's how you build a company of very high value is a growing recurring revenue. And that's what I did in my previous company that I was able to sell for uh, a pretty good amount. So um, I, I and, and, and if I got to pay someone, a sales guy or girl to call them back in a year and resell them, I've got an additional cost of sales coming up in a year, right? I've got work and, and, and labor associated with re-upping them. Where if it's just monthly on an evergreen basis, just keeps rolling in. So I'm yeah. trying to build my recurring, but actually, payment I'm going to put into place um, this month. We're gonna we're gonna um, be a little more assert, a little more aggressive in prepaid hosting. Just while my company's ramping up and while our recurring revenue is climbing, I'd like to bring in some prepaid. <laughs> definitely affect cash flow positively. So. Yeah. Um, there's pros and cons to both. Uh, I just don't like having to resell. Cool. Great answer. Um, got a couple more questions here that we'll hit on briefly. So quickly, how do you, how do you handle some routine maintenance? You know, if someone wants to swap out pictures, swap out text, obviously you can do it quickly, but what's, what's your kind of pricing structure for that? Here's our, here's our part of our sales value proposition. Um, said, look, with our, with our service, not only do you get hosting, okay? Because they say, well, I can get hosting for seven on Bluehost, you know? Or I can, you know, you hear, all, all, you hear objections to, to $39 sometimes, for sure. They, they object to that for sure, small businesses do, for sure. So um, we say with us, um, you get more, it's more than just hosting, right? And hostings, you know, you guys know how to explain hosting. With us, you also get an account manager. And your account manager's internet marketing expert that you have access to basically on an unlimited basis to give you guidance on all things internet. So if you have questions about, you know, your Google business page or improving your SEO, or if you have a question about that, you have someone you can call and, you know, we're a real business. We have an office, you know, we have seven people on our team, you know, not big, uh, it's growing of course. Um, but you have access to an account manager as part of our value proposition. So you get unlimited support. So you can have all the changes you want is included in the $39. Now, the analogy I use on that, it's like the all-you-can-eat buffet, okay? The place of the all-you-can-eat buffet is going to make money and be profitable on 49 out of 50 people. 
but the one guy that rolls in and eats five steaks and two cakes, you're going to lose money on that one guy that takes advantage of it. But, um, but for the most part, you're going to make money on the average. So if we see a client type that's likely to be a high maintenance, lots of changes, we would charge different pricing for that. I'm not yeah. going to throw the $39 a month unlimited changes to a business. Like let's say they're a used car dealer. I don't have any of those as clients, by the way. Now I used to back in my previous days, but you know, there's, they, they should be using CRM software so they can take the picture and upload the car themselves, by the way. But if their inventory is constantly changing, gosh, we were dealing with a, um, some sort of boutique and her inventory was changing all the time. And she's sending us all these pictures. That's not $39 a month, right? Right. Well, it's going to depend on the business type. So when I say 39 a month, it's, low amount of changes. It's low, very, very, very low maintenance clients, high margin. Very, you know, I can support a lot of clients. We used to support about 350 websites per one support person in my previous company. I think that's a great, that's a great benchmark for, for people to use there. And then, you know, again, you, you open up that line of communication with them, you build that, that trust and then the upsell opportunities are, are endless from there too. Right. Yeah. Um, so last question here that we've gotten a couple times, and I think there's a couple different answers here. One is the technical side that I'll, I'll answer and then I'll kick it to you. Um, but people are asking, you know, if, if a client wants to stop, stop the hosting, they want to, you know, cancel their contract. Um, do they own the website? Can they migrate it elsewhere? Um, so from a technical perspective, if you're building on not just a mono website, but, in reality, this is the case with, with any website platform. There, there really isn't a simple, you know, take your website and go do whatever you want with it. There are, there are site scrapers online where you can scrape all the HTML off the site and then, you know, take that and go use that wherever you'd like. But, you know, from, from our perspective, and this is the case with, with every other website platform out there, um, you know, we don't, we're not going to make it, we're not going to devote resources to making it easy for you to take your website elsewhere. Everyone claims that WordPress is super portable and that you can take it and host it everywhere. And in 99% of the cases, that's, that's actually not the case. And part of that also, what I want to hear from you, Steve, is, you know, the design is, is yours, right? Like that's a proprietary website design that, that you did. So, you know, that you're also not going to, you know, let them take that full website elsewhere anyway, right? This comes up and here's how we handle it. Um, this means they've talked to someone else that's, you know, the companies have learned to try to make that a sales angle for them that, hey, well, ask them who owns your site. Um, and I explained to a client, going, this isn't like pulling a DVD out of the DVD player and sticking it in another one, okay? If you're going to try to move a, WordPress site, let me ask you this, Mr. Customer, who is actually gonna execute that move? You need a technical, you need a, a hosting, a system administrator, you need some sort of techie dude or girl that can actually pull that off, way easier said than done, but this is out there because the people selling against us are saying, ask them who owns your site, ask them who owns your site. It's a sales trick, it's a sales technique, and we're on the short end of that stick. Here's how we answer it. This is a great line and I'm happy to like type, we have this typed up in our sales training. I'm happy to provide this if, if anybody wants it. But here's what we said. We said, listen, all the content that you provide, you own. You send us pictures, words, of course you own all the content, okay? However, the software platform that your website is being built on is, I'm positive the company spent over a million dollars on building the software, maybe more, okay? I license that. I can't give you that software license. So all your content is uploaded into it. You own it. If you ever want to leave, you own all your content. But whoever you're going to leave to, they're just going to take your content and they're just going to put it on another platform, which is the same thing we did when we took over your site. We took it off Wix. We pulled all your content over and we put it onto our platform. So you own the content. I don't even own the software. My partner owns the software. I can't sell you that. Um, and that's how we handle that. And that usually solves the objection. 
Yeah. Um, and then on the question of, you know, what if the client wants to manage their own? I said, we, we don't do that. So look, our value proposition, you want to change a picture, you call us, we change it. We don't give our clients back end access. We have with one. Um, and I really, really discourage that. So we're not a do it yourself shop. This is not Wix or Squarespace or GoDaddy. We're a professional design agency. We're going to give you a professional service. Part of our value proposition is that service. If you're looking for a build your own, that's not, that's not what we do. Awesome. Great answer. Um, well, I think uh, questions have slowed and I think we're, we're getting close to time. So Cam, I think we're about ready to wrap up here. A couple of people are asking about uh, getting access to the recording of the whole meeting, which I'm sure you can uh, speak to, but I, I'm sure this will be available on, on Van Das's website. And if you registered, um, I'm guessing it'll be emailed to you, but Cam, I'll let you take that. For sure. Oh. Yeah, for sure. So um, next week, um, I will be sending an email to all registrants with a link to the recording of this um, webinar, as well as the, a copy of the presentation slides. So this has been a very fantastic discussion. Thank you, Steve, for sharing all your secret sauces with us. And I hope everyone found this webinar helpful. If you do have any questions, um, the easiest way to get in touch with us would just be to email marketplace at bendasta.com. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Right. And thanks, thanks Steve. Thanks, Brady, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Bye, everyone.